Okay, now we are moving on to a slightly more difficult concept and we'll try to solve this problem in two ways. One is the one is the ranges method of solving these kind of problems and the other one is the distance. So before we go there, let's understand the basics a little bit first. If I am given x minus 5, if you recall what we did a little bit earlier in this video, that this is same as 5 minus x, it doesn't make a difference because when you open up the bracket, the quantity is always positive. Step number one to open up the bracket is to, on a number line, create the anchor point at which point this quantity gets zero. So in, in this case, it would be five. And around this anchor point, make sure you put a zero just to orient yourself where the zero is going to be. And write out x. So again, x has to be, x could be here or x could be here because 5 minus x or x minus 5 is just the distance between x and 5 and x could be on either side of 5. Step number two is to evaluate whatever quantity you are given. Let's take you were given this quantity, for example, 5 minus x to evaluate that quantity for a possible value of x on one side of the anchor point, in this case, the five. So evaluate right side of x. So right side would be, let's say x equal to six. So five minus x would be five minus six equal to minus one. Can absolute value ever be minus one? No, which means if my expression is five minus x, on the right side, it would be minus of five minus x, okay? So when you open up the bracket on the right of the anchor point, just, just write down this value, minus of five minus x. Don't do anything else. Step number three is evaluate the left side. On the left side of five, x could be four, so x equals four. Five minus x, which is five minus four is one. So it is always positive. So we could write five minus x as is, on this side. This is how you open up an absolute value without any difference. Okay, so we, we opened up the absolute value for this quantity. Let's open it up for this quantity. It should be exactly same, but let's follow the example through and through. Now let's evaluate this x minus 5 on the right side of the anchor. So which is 6 minus 5 equals 1. So that means x minus 5 is positive, so I can write it as is. So I have to, I can write x minus 5 here. And on the left side of 5, where x equals 4, x minus 5 is 4 minus 5, that is minus 1, which means negative of the value is true. So I will write here as minus of x minus 5, right? So this quantity is going to be less than 5 would be minus of x minus 5. So this one led to these two values and this one leads to these two values, but they are actually the same value. If you open up these brackets, this is same as x minus five and this is same as five minus x. So no matter how you express inside of the absolute value, when you open it up, it comes to the same expression on the number line. And this is a very powerful method that we would use. Identifying the anchor point, and keeping us oriented with the zero, evaluating the right side. And as you start doing more and more of these, evaluation of right side and left side would be very, very fast. I can promise you that you would be able to do it on instinct. You don't even need to think about it. And evaluating left side of it with another value of x and then writing the expression down as is, not doing anything else. So let's, let's try to do this with this kind of complicated expression where we have x plus 4, 5 minus x, and 9 plus x. So let's talk about the anchor points. That's the first step, right? So the anchor point for x plus 4, where x plus 4 becomes 0, is minus 4. For x plus 9, where x plus 9 becomes 0, is minus 9. And for 5 minus x, it is 5. So I have wrote down the anchor points already. Okay, now let's take each of the expressions one by one. So if I have x plus 4, my anchor point is this, 0 is not an anchor point, x equal to 
zero because zero is on the right side of four and that's where we start. So zero plus four would be four positive. So when we are looking at all the x's on this side, we are looking at x plus four expression, right? So how many ranges do we have this side? This range and then this range. So let me just write x plus 4 for each of those ranges on the right side of 4. On the left side of 4, it will just be opposite. But you can try, right? You can take, for example, minus 5, which is on the left side of minus 4. And minus 5 plus 4 would be minus 1. So, but modulus has to be positive. So it would be negative of minus 1 to make it positive. So here on this side, we have these two ranges. For those, I will write negative of the expression as is. Without even opening it up, I will just write it down, right? Now remember, there is a minus sign here that I haven't taken in account yet, and I will take it account, take it into account later. Five minus x, let's find the five. So here is the five. On the right hand side of five, five minus x will be negative because five minus six, for example, is minus one. To make the minus one positive, you have to put a negative sign in front of it. So I will write negative five minus x here. And for all of these other ranges, I am going to just write five minus x as is. I haven't touched this negative sign yet. And systematically, I will come to all the signs, but not now. Let's look at the expression nine plus x, where the anchor is minus nine, because nine plus x becomes zero at minus nine. If you take any value, let's take zero, on the right hand side of minus nine, nine plus x stays as is because it yields you a positive number. You can take minus eight also, for example, right here somewhere, nine minus eight would be one, so it is positive. So on this side of the nine, which is the right side, it will be nine plus x, and let's write that down for all the ranges again, because Anywhere above minus nine, it will be the same quantity. We just have different ranges, so it's better to express them in different ranges. On left hand side of the minus nine, it will be just the opposite sign, right? So this is what we have learned. We don't need to reevaluate it. We have opened up the modulus sign and we have these ranges, right? So this is one range. This is my another range. This is my another range. So I have four ranges across these three anchor points. If you recall, zero is not an anchor. This is just to orient ourselves. We haven't yet taken care of this negative sign. When this negative sign is in front of the modulus sign, it inverts the modulus sign and the behavior of it because modulus is always positive and negative of a positive quantity will be negative. So Let's get rid of this negative sign and add the negative sign in front of these values, inverting them. And that takes off the neg negative is not inside the modulus here. So it will have an impact. Now you have different ranges and different expressions within different ranges and you can solve for them. So let's solve for this one. So I have minus x minus four minus five plus x and minus nine minus x, right? And the equation was these two in subtraction equals nine plus x, so something like this. So x and x goes out, I get minus nine, which cancels off, and I get x equals zero here. So I'm getting a value of x, which is good, and I'm getting the value of x as zero, when x is given to be less than minus nine. That cannot happen, right? X cannot be zero and less than minus nine. So this is an infeasible value, so I cross it out. Let's do another one. So again, minus X minus four on this one, plus X on this one equals nine plus X. So again, X, X would cancel out. You will get X equals minus 18. Is this feasible? We are saying x has to be between minus 4 and 9 for these ranges, right? Minus 18 would lie somewhere on the other side of minus 9. So this is not feasible. In fact, what you would find is this equality is not feasible in any of the ranges. I will leave the expressions up to you. However, I will give you the answers so that you can do the calculation on your own. As you can see, 
x never falls in any of the ranges that we have defined or expecting it. Hence, this equality is not even feasible, right? So there is no value of x that satisfies this condition. This is one way of solving the question. These kind of questions do come in GMAT sometimes and they are very high degree of difficulty. There is a very good Manhattan GMAT question on this particular topic and this particular method. I have the solutions for it. I highly recommend that you go through that question also and understand this method better and practice this method. The next method we are going to solve this question with, and it will be easier to solve this question with, is the distance method. And let's look at that method really quickly. Okay, so let's look at the distance method of solving this problem. So let's draw the number line again, and I'm going to put zero on the number line. And again, I'm going to mark all the anchors. So for me, minus nine is somewhere here, minus four is somewhere here, and five is somewhere here. And I'm going to re-express this expression into a addition expression. So if this were true, then I can rewrite it as equals nine plus x, plus five minus x. When you are looking at the distance way of solving methods, it is better to look at the addition than subtraction. Addition is more intuitive than subtraction. So what this is saying is, distance between a point x and minus four is equal to distance between x and minus nine and distance between x and five. There is an x such that this equality is possible and we have to find what that x is. So let's take an x somewhere here which is less than minus 9 and try to represent this in distances. So the distance between x and 4, so it is this distance, is equal to distance between x and 9 plus distance between x, x and 5. As you can see for this x, it is definitely not possible or the distance between x and 5 is already more than x minus 4. It can't be equal. So value of x in this range is not possible. Let's take a x in here. The distance between x and minus 4, which is this small, is equal to this distance plus this distance, x and minus 9 and x and 5. You can obviously see that is not possible. Let's take x somewhere in this range. This is the distance between x and minus 4, x and 5, and we are adding something more than x and minus 4 already. So when x is here, it is not possible also, and you will find that when x is somewhere here also, it's not possible. Just looking at the graphical representation and applying the distance formula, you are able to see that for none of the ranges, this can ever be possible. So there is no value of x. Now, GMAT is not going to ask you such question where there is no value of x. However, the method still applies. You could get a question which looks slightly different. Instead, it would say, okay, for which value of x is x plus 4, the distance between x and minus 4 is less than these numbers. And then you would have multiple ranges of x as a result of that, or maybe all ranges of x. And inequalities is in scope of GMAT. So GMAT could, could give you this same concept or application of this concept in a different way. So don't discount that. The concept is not about no value. It just happens that in this case, there was no value of x feasible. However, the way question can be asked is different. The method you apply, the distance method, is still applicable. Uh, I actually have a solution to a different inequalities problem, a modulus problem, in my uh, videos that applies the distance formula. If you search for GMAT distance formula and look for it, uh, you would find it. I have solved many official guide questions and some of the Manhattan GMAT tough questions of absolute value in my channel. They are under the playlist. I will give you a link of the playlist in the description so that you can continue solving these questions and getting a better understanding. I hope as a result of going through this video, you are feeling more comfortable with absolute values. I don't expect you to become a master just within this 20 minutes of video. I fully expect you to go back again and again, revise these concepts and keep solving the problems. However, 
I think this handles the basics pretty well. And if you apply these basics, you should be able to start getting better at solving absolute value questions. If this was helpful, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. There would be more free videos coming. Thank you very much. Have a good one.